Hey friends, sorry we were unable to get you a podcast episode yesterday, which would be Friday the 15th. We unfortunately got busy doing just life, yard work mostly, yep. and uh, totally lost track of time and didn't manage Next thing we knew, the, the sun was the going down. Record- yeah, by the time we realized, oh hey, we, brought- we told everybody we were going to record an episode, it Plus- was already... Uh, too late <laughs> we had hoped emma would go to sleep early and she she really didn't yeah no she didn't sleep very well that's how it always happens though like when we want her to go to sleep yep she doesn't and so. we spent the whole day outside and she's still all day no naps no nothing mm-hmm. so of course we're apologies on our end we, yeah we we originally planned to record this episode on the nuclear family And we're really excited to do that, but we have decided to push that episode back a week. So stay tuned, because that's going to be a good one. Yeah, just with everything going on and with everything coming up next week with inauguration, um, we just felt like this episode we needed to really kind of give everyone a sense of peace, um, give people advice on how to pray for our nation right now. Um, We wanted to, um, again just kind of give everybody a sense of peace with yeah. everything going on. We na- uh, The title of this episode is going to be called Pray because we feel like right now everyone could take a moment, you know, no matter how long you need. If that means it's just five minutes each of your morning, if that means you need to be in fasting prayer for what's coming up next week um, or this week whenever you're listening to this episode. Um, you know, we just want everyone to pray for our nation Pray for the president, pray for our military, our first responders, and even pray for our neighbors right now. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I know if it feels like the nation is going insane around you, you're not alone in that feeling, that's for sure. So Mm -hmm. let's take a deep breath and we'll get into this week's episode together. Yep. Um, Although right now it may feel like we are righteous in our anger or righteous with discontent with everything that's going on, Remember that this gives us an opportunity to turn to the Lord and cast our anxieties and our worries and our frustrations to Him. There isn't anything that our God cannot handle. Amen. I feel like that's a good piece of advice that people need to sit in for a little bit is knowing like, hey, our God is good and He can handle anything. Especially with everything going on because I know even for both of us, like we both get wrapped up in worrying about or thinking about or trying to keep up with everything that's going on and changing and it's just so crazy and sometimes you know we don't lose sight on the big picture but yeah let us just also remember that nothing on this earth lasts forever i think uh people kind of get sidetracked in our worldly things you know just remember that like our school loans don't last forever. Our job doesn't last forever. And even our stresses don't last forever. And as we watch the mass mainstream media stories all over the nation, mixed with the crazy out there conspiracy theories, let us just be reminded that as Christians, our lifetime and forever are not the same thing. We know that as Christians, it sometimes is hard to remember that we kind of mm-hmm. get they kind of get t- entangled with each other and while you know our 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 earthly lifetime might seem like an eternity our, our eternal souls are not yeah this is just like a small chapter of our eternity it's so yeah. crazy to think about yeah but... and I, I just want to remind everyone you know this too <clears throat> shall pass and i hope that that gives at least one of you a sense of peace mm-hmm and uh, again, let us let us just remind you to embrace all the amazing things that are going on around you in your life. And even anything that you're going through, if it's a horrible situation that's going on in your life, embrace that as well. Because like I said, this too shall pass. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> I know that this week is going to be a extremely crazy one. And to those uh, who are in D.C., currently or who will be going to dc for this inauguration uh y'all know you know we're praying for you 
Yeah, assuming you're listening to this episode prior to inauguration, yeah, prior to or inauguration. like a day or two after. So. Yeah. <laughs> If you're listening to this a little bit farther after, just know we were praying. Yeah. And, you know, as someone who's served in the National Guard for all the troops that have been activated, you know, we're, we're praying for you guys as well. Um, anyone that's felt cheated about what's been going on, uh, we urge you all to pray and put your trust in God and know that, you know, it's part of the plan, whatever you're, you're feeling about it. Um, for those who are rejoicing with everything that's going on, I urge y'all to pray and trust in the Lord as well. Yeah, we know that the nation is extremely divided right now. And yes. I know um, there, there's, there are a lot of people, let us not forget that there are a lot of people who may not agree politically, but can agree to disagree and can both come to a good understanding of wanting the quote unquote American dream and want to see America become a better place. So I, I, we can say that there are plenty of people in this country that do see the middle ground being met. Um, but we need to take this opportunity to turn to the Lord and take note that we are called to love our neighbor. So if you, have someone in your family, your friend, or a coworker, anybody that you may not agree with politically that may have created some tension, just remember to be praying for them. We are called to love our neighbor. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, it's difficult as that may be. I know it's really hard for us to pray for people that we may not have in our lives. Or still show love to those yeah. who, you know you're not on the same page with right now because I know that that's definitely been And that's okay. You don't have to agree with everybody. You don't have to be on the same page. And I think that's something that people need to understand is you can agree to disagree. You can have civilized conversations. You guys can put yourself in other people's shoes and understand, you know, where they're coming from or try to at least. And if you can't, again, agree to disagree. I think that's really important that a lot of people have kind of lost that ideology i guess if you will yeah, for sure you know and um i think we must recognize that uh, being kingdom minded is the cure to our worldly anxieties let me say it again being kingdom minded is the cure to our worldly anxieties just amen let that sink in for a moment you know one big thing is i know for sure that the gospel spreads like wildfire Mm -hmm. especially in devastating times that you know no one will be able to overcome its light with darkness the gospel shines brighter and it brings hope to the hopeless absolutely um if y'all hear like the cracking and stuff in the background that's yeah we're recording in our living room. yeah we're in the living room our fireplace is going because we're about to make s'mores in our fire in our fireplace (laughs) it's it's date night emma's asleep Hey, we're going to watch an episode of either The Rookie or Yellowstone. So mm-hmm. if you watch either one, cool. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> or if you have show recommendations too. Yeah. But anyways, uh, remember when things seem to be feeling insane or out of control, let's go ahead and turn our hearts to the Lord and know that our lifetime and forever, it's not the same thing. Yeah. Pray for the neighbor. Pray for our nation. Pray. Just just pray it's we need it yeah and again like we said in the beginning if if right now you're unsure of how to pray you know i think just saying any prayer just talking to god and talking through those anxieties and those worries and those motions casting them at his feet just know like he can handle it let him take that from you put it on his plate because he can handle it and i think yeah, ask him to help guide you i know yeah. it's definitely if you're struggling with any of these things that we've talked about because i know i've had to just be like hey god just guide me please because i'm struggling with this yeah i've noticed for me one of the biggest things is is uh, you know i'm i've tried really hard over the past couple of months to build like a social media following and start creating like a certain kind of content and a platform for myself that I've kind of found myself getting more stressed out the more I'm on 
you know, social media. It doesn't have mm-hmm. to just be Instagram, <clears throat> Facebook, Twitter, Parlor, whatever it may be. For me, I've noticed that I have to kind of do like, a, not necessarily like a social media fast because I know some people completely go away from it for a certain amount of time. For me, I've had to completely cut it out of my morning routine. Yeah. Because I, you know, I've noticed for myself, like if I don't cut it out, then, you know, it's not necessarily um, anxiety or worry, but it's more of like frustration with me, frustration with the polarization of what's going on. Especially if that's the first thing you're doing and you start your day with that, like boom in your face. So if you're noticing like right now that like your anxiety or your frustration or whatever emotions you have are kind of getting out of control. If you feel the necessity to go on a social media fast, do it. Mm -hmm. I highly suggest it. I think it's cleansing for our soul and yeah, not too long ago, didn't you delete like every social media I app did. off I your phone? I removed every app off my phone days. for about four days. Yeah. And it was I, like a part of me in the beginning, the first couple of days. And of course, this is just our worldly bodies. First couple of days, I was like, oh, what am I missing? Oh, did someone post something important? And then by the end of the day, I had realized I'd spent more uninterrupted time with my family. Yeah. That and then I, I wasn't needed. Yeah. I wasn't planning on doing any type of social media fast, but I ended up not checking my social media as much because you weren't. So it was kind of nice, but yeah. anyways, so definitely if you feel like you need to, to do whatever hole. you need to do, I mean, if you've noticed even during this time, if you're stress eating, if you need to go on and like an actual fast food fast, do it, do whatever you need to mm-hmm. help yourself not give in to the anxieties going on around us right now. I think that that's really important. So fast yeah. and, and pray. take that. <laughs> yeah. Take that energy that you would give to food and give it to God. And yeah. Let him so go to work with it. Basically anytime that you would be eating or you would be looking at your social media, instead of going and doing those things, you would spend that time in prayer, spend that time with God and, and you would you'll notice a huge difference yeah, you just sure. will i know a lot of people i know i was a skeptic at first it truly is a game changer yeah i know it's been hard for me because like fasting in general was well you'll think you'll die well for the longest <laughs> time i would but then like for a while i did like the intermittent fasting and which is for really someone, good yeah but for someone who's like struggled with my eating habits and weight you know, I, I don't mind fasting, but I need to make sure that my energy is focused in prayer instead of worrying about the health or eating so aspect if, like, of it. We're totally going on a tangent here, but I wonder if like when you did do like a fast, mm-hmm. if you cut out certain exterior things, like you cut out the scale, you cut out other things, like if you cut out a mirror, mm-hmm. things that would make you think about those things oh. when you're doing a fast if that would have like an effect on it sorry guys you're listening to our TED talk <laughs> these are the things we talk about at night anyway so we're going to close this out thank you guys for joining us on today's episode again we're sorry that we didn't get it to you yeah, the day so that we said we would um, but we are grateful to have you here stay tuned for next week's episode like Randy told you guys we will be talking about the nuclear family we also have an interview um, with David Inglehart and his wife, pastor, pastor, pastor and lawyer. Yes, pastor and lawyer David Inglehart, David Inglehart and Esquire. his wonderful wife Bethany. Um, we did an interview with them that we'll be releasing next week as well. Um, so stay tuned for that. And y'all have a great rest of your day, great rest yeah. of your week, and we will talk to you next episode. Yep. All right. Bye. bye.